Well, the Bears certainly weren't trying to tip their hand with what they got planned for Tariq Cohen, but they sure as hell showed you what they got in store for Trey Burton. It seemed that way. Seemingly. If you watch this game, it was undeniable that Trey Burton is about to crush it. Trey Burton coming out party. It was pretty solid, and if we were another show, we would have what that guy would call a dance party Yeah, <laughs> for this. Yeah, that's Does he true. still do that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tie that in in a minute because <clears throat> I'm not going to get put him in front of Trey Burton. But we'll say, we'll say his name out loud. Matt Kelly would have a dance party for Trey Burton because we have been... I don't know if anybody else has been leading the charge on Burton like we've been leading the charge. Nah. We started we, last year. We, we gave you we gave you Burton when he was still on the waivers. waiver wire. We gave you unless you had a super bit super super deep bench league. We gave you Burton while he was still on the waiver wire at the end of seventeen. We 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 hammered him pre free, uh, free agency when cheap money. He was he was he was an all star on the cheap money podcast. Go pick him what, up before I, he gets go somewhere else. Put, pick him up before he gets signed in free agency to be somebody's top tight end. And then he goes to the Chiefs, which couldn't have been a better fairy tale ending. And by he, Chiefs, you mean Bears? My bad. I'm thinking about Nagy and the Chiefs. Yeah, way to way to be on my back right now. Way you. to give me way to way to fix me up there. So <laughs> he goes and he joins the Bears. Who Casey breaks it down for you and he tells you about Nagy leaving the Chiefs in our free agency fallout in the free agency fallout in April and ties and connects these dots with Peterson from the Eagles who also came from the Chiefs and all you know them boys were like hey should I give should I give Burton the most money in free agency of any tight end this year and Peterson's his boy Nagy's is you know he's sure those things worked out yeah and you're coming from a, a system where it's you had a it was very tight end centric. It's just weird how all these things worked out. And so it, and weird. It's just coaching like, doesn't matter. It's almost like these schemes and these coaching things and these regimes and these trees. They all kind of show each other how to do things and what to do and how they like to do things. And you know, you got a Travis Kelsey. And again, I've said this multiple times. I'm not calling Trey Burton Travis Kelsey. We're simply just suggesting that he's going to play some sort of a similar role to an Ertz. Or a Kelsey. He is not Ertz or Kelsey, but he's going to be playing that slot, that high slot percentage, that move all around the formation, that wide receiver, that tight end playing wide receiver. Like, he may not be as big as those other two guys, but he's very athletic. He can block well enough, and Nagy's going to scheme him. And you just saw that Mitchell was super comfortable pumping the ball to right. Trey Burton. Mitchell well, looked the best throwing it to Trey Burton. Exactly. Well, we t- we were when we were talking about Mitchell Trubisky, we were talking about Nagy saying, "Okay, the first game of the preseason, we went out there and we looked kind of stale, and it was a little bit of a bummer because Chicago offense has been pumped up all offseason long just like the Titans would getting LaFleur into town. So, Nagy says, "Okay, well, we got to use a little bit of Burton here to make things easy." And he looked fluid. He looked like a gazelle. And he's hand, he just, just nabbing anything, just catching anything with his hands that get anywhere close to him. Hard to tackle. Making just plays outside plenty of his Plenty of yak. And also, I, dude looks just, I mean, yeah, he's not physically as big and dominant as Travis Kelsey. But guess what? Travis Kelsey didn't fit. He's not big and dominant like Gronk. He's a small, he's, a, he's not nearly Gronk. But he's out there putting up Gronk-type numbers. Right. And if Burton puts out Kelsey-type numbers... Jesus, you didn't pay anything for him for months and months. We've been giving him to you for free, and this and it was one quarter of football. Oh my gosh, it was like one drive almost. One, two one, really, two drives, yeah. two drives, one and, catch on one drive, and then I think the rest, the other four on another. Well, the very first play, the ver- the second down of the of the game for the Bears, and they have this little disguised screenplay where Trey Burton starts off in line, which is like one of the only times I saw him in line, and he's like he kind of chips. Nick Chubb, as he's coming around to rush, chips him off just enough, gives gives the quarterback enough time to dump it over to him, immediately has a guy in his face, like sidesteps him, and then the, the athleticism just jumps off the page and he jets up the field for nine yards after the catch. Incredible acceleration on that play. He And it was really, he almost did like a half circle around that mm-hmm. defensive lineman that got in his way. There was no way that guy could even get a hand on him. Mm-mm. Burton just jumped off the page, jumped off the screen like you're saying there, Jay yep. Wendy. It just, it, it's, all it took was that one play to be like, okay, that, wow, okay. And then three or four more catches later. And, and a yeah, touchdown. I mean, the, sec, the second catch, he's lined up out, ride, out wide, Right, finds a soft spot in the zone, makes a nice Out catch. Out wide, on, right, but a little tighter to the formation than than you know 
And he's not like wide. He's the only guy out, out there. He's, the, though, he's single. Right? Yeah, for single sure. wide right, and he goes and finds a soft spot in the zone, makes a a nice catch on a ball that's outside of his frame, extends his arms fully to make the catch. Sure, it's awesome looking. Third catch, he's again. It's an out route on from the right side out wide. Fourth catch, he's on. He's on the left side of the formation in a little bunch a little three wide receiver set where the first two guys clear out and he runs a slant underneath to get the first down look at it's him. just he's all out all over the place and it's just so obvious that they're scheming him yep. the ball and, and then that, the touchdown play on was comes was, across was the fantastic. formation came, came was was lined up on the left came across the formation behind the formation yep. while the play was going on kind of act like maybe he was going to try to get in the way of the of the free rusher coming around there and just kind of skirted around it him. almost looks like it was about to be that little shovel pass right. that they did in kansas city with kelsey so, it so froze, many times it did two things it froze that player gave the quarterback another second and then he was wide open and in, right. in the flat over there and hit him and he waltzed into the touch in, into the end zone for the for the score and it was it was just fantastic it's just so weird how <laughs> how all that worked out how yeah. you got a tight end centric coach who had just had a great tight end his first order of business was to go pay a tight end who may i don't know if him and peterson are boys or not but they certainly know one another and it's just a weird coincidence that he got that guy off of that team who was the second fiddle to a really good player who also plays a lot in the slot who also plays a lot like a wide receiver who's not a huge inline guy right well that's what i was saying was how many times when's the last time you saw a backup tight end which you know, Burton was playing in Ertz's shadow and, and Casey's been beating a drum for Burton being better than anybody's given him credit for for two years now. And then you get out and you get a free agency deal that gives you a ridiculous amount of money for your limited production, but limited opportunity, limited snaps because Ertz has kind of semi been healthy the last two years. And but if like, he hasn't been, he's been awesome. But when Ertz missed games, Burton was crushing, and that's what we were trying to tell you last year. Is like, well, when he gets a chance, he's freaking awesome, right? And he's about to be a free agent, and here right. and it happened. There and was just too many things that made sense that went together for the usage to not. And obviously, we're not in season again. I said this earlier. We, you can overreact to things that are happening and make it fit your narrative, and that's what we're doing right now. But. The narrative that we put together was there was a whole bunch of facts and reasoning and logic that all went into that. Right. And not and you know, all these things matter. So, it wasn't just some numbers right. machine. It wasn't just like, it, oh, I right. love I love Trey Burton because of his athleticism. Yeah. And it wasn't because he got a good uh, his you put his 40 time and his broad jump together and you make a burst score and all of right. a sudden he's supposed to be good at football because right. if that was the case um, but what was Dalvin, his college dominant? If that was the case, Dalvin Cook wouldn't have been good. Remember right. how that worked out? So Burton came in there, and, and, the first, and actually week one of the preseason, the very first drive, I texted Casey. I said, how funny is that that the Bears offense looks like the Chiefs? And, yeah, they had zero like high-end players in there, and it was just a very – just. Get a st- they just, went right down the field and did all right with Chase right Daniels. They went right down the field. That's what I'm saying. But it, but it was just the actual X's and O's, which yeah. some people think is ridiculous. It's narrative. But you know what it was? It was facts. Just like Casey said. Logic is what and, it is. Right. It's not. It's Logic's like, not always correct, but that's the word is logic. Travis May was all upset about how Trey Burton was getting all this hype, and he put up his last year's stat box as proof of why he's not any good or something. It's like, yeah. Well, Come on, he, and like you just said, Bico, he just got paid so much money. How many backup tight ends have you seen get paid that much money? It's because all this they had a plan. Logic it was the first and, order right. of business for this new regime was go out and get a person to fit into their system and perform their scheme, and that's what we said. And so last year, I I I get to listen to a lot of podcasts because I run my own business and I sit on a tractor most of the time. And I got my headphones on. And if I'm not studying real estate investment, it's, it's, it's fantasy football. Had to get a real estate investment. Mix, and, mix and mix. <laughs> I, you know, you can only listen to so much. I know. I but I'm, I'm literally digging for just people to give me facts all day long that I don't have time to go dig for because I don't get to, I don't work in front of a computer. I don't have time to go and look at all these stats. Y'all boys give them to me. And Graham Barfield gave them to you after two weeks of preseason. He gave you like it was like a 0.2% less of Burton's usage in the slot and targets and all that stuff moving around than Kelsey has on average when he plays for the Chiefs. Right. So it's right there lined up. And last year going into week, it was after week one, I was listening to Matt Kelly's podcast. And after week one, Tariq Cohen blows up and David Johnson gets hurt and 
Matt Kelly's numbers machine says Curran Williams was the pick, and he said if you didn't pick up Curran Williams off the uh, waiver wire over Tariq, over Tariq, then you were doing it wrong, and you were bad at fantasy football. And then he goes and does his thing, and he says, you know, fantasy football doesn't have to be hard. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. And then guess who's the better asset for your dynasty team? Kurt, uh, Kerwin Williams. Two weeks later, in Kurt, what world did anybody think Kerwin Williams was going to be a good asset for your fantasy? Matt Zero Kelly's world. world. Matt I, Kelly's world yeah. was that. And so after that, I didn't really... If you're really a minion ha- or a buzzard, I guess. I didn't have time for that mess. So I got off the Matt... I, 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 he's going to give me some stats. He's got a great website. I love the advanced metrics. I'm not saying I don't appreciate the advanced metrics. I love. I want to incorporate them as much as possible, but I'm not going to pretend like I don't watch football and I don't use logic. Oh, that's the they, problem. He doesn't watch football. That's, that's clear. I know, I know. But, you, you know, so I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. I, hey, I'll take a little bit from over here, but my core package is I want to watch these games and see how these players look, and I pay attention to coaching and offensive lines and all that fun stuff. So Matt Kelly tells me that Trey, that you got to go after Curran Williams, and you're doing it wrong if you don't give Tariq Cohen a chance. I'm like, okay. If you do uh, give him a chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're doing it wrong if you pick up T- Tariq Cohen over right. Curran Williams. And I was like, man, just the staunchness and the inability for him to be incorrect on that statement was enough for me to be like, you know what? I can get my stats from somewhere somewhere else so the other day i got pretty bored i'm listening to some podcasts looking for some stuff and i was like you know what let me give matt kelly another chance i get 14 minutes and 40 seconds in <laughs> <Time until stamped. laughs> throwing up in my mouth my man he goes and tells you he spent in the first 10 minutes he's talking about gronk on this podcast and talking about how gronk's good and he's a league winner and sure we all love gronk why not so, already gave you those stats a couple weeks ago. Gave you those stats. To the podcast. The, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about how we wouldn't necessarily buy him in a dynasty league startup in the second round because of the investment and all that stuff. But the points per game is the points outrageous. per game is undeniable. Undeniable. Great advantage at the tight end position. But then he goes and he says, "I want to tell you about this tight end who is the second tight end on his team. You might not even know his name." And he said, "My minions might know his name, but here is it's Adam Sheen." Adam Sheen, he could be the next Gronk, and you need, this is why you're not even taking Trey Burton because on the goal line, Adam Sheen's coming in and Trey Burton's coming out, and it's just is like, that right now. How, and he and th- <laughs> but he but he took the time to tell us, yeah. the people that are listening to him, and and you know basically his audience, which I feel really sorry for because they they get in tra- and if they get in that bear trap and they don't get a chance to listen to people like us, they're in a bear trap. So I mean, if you're down with being called a minion or buzzard, then you deserve Matt Kelly. Well, that's true. So let me no t- let me let me finish while I threw up in my mouth. Okay, so he tells you to stay away from Burton completely because he called him diminutive. He said he's 6'3", 235 pounds, and he's too small to play tight end. Uh, and his best player player profiler comparison is James Casey. And he said you don't want James Casey on your team. <laughs> and so for him to have the nerve to tell his, uh, I'm I'm here to tell our listeners that might have heard that to come on now, pay attention to what's going on. Watch that first quarter of the second preseason game and see the next usage of Travis Kelsey come to life. And maybe he's not Travis Kelsey, but you can't watch football and watch him catch those balls and not be like, oh, my God, I want this guy on my team. Gotta because if, you're, if, you, if you see all that and then you're like, okay, I'm good on passing on him, there, well, I can't help you. Yeah. Listen, I got no problem with Adam Shaheen. I liked Adam Shaheen. He's, the athletic profile is awesome, and it's great, and he's a big guy and all that kind of stuff. It's, again, he's also not this regime's guy. This was the last regime's guy, and their first order of business was coming in and getting a guy that they wanted to do their thing with and paying him handsomely. and paying him handsomely. I have no problem with Adam Shaheen and I have no problem putting him on my bench at all. But if you think that you're going to come out here and grab Adam Shaheen and you're going to be able to put him in your starting lineup from week to week. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. That, exactly. Right. And I talk a lot about starting lineups and I look like I, I don't you I can like say Adam Shaheen's Shaheen. a great hold. I got Shaheen. Don't on, be discouraged. I got Shaheen on a taxi squad on a team that I really, really like. I Don't be discouraged. To be, yeah, this ain't about Listen, knocking Adam Shaheen. This is not about knocking Adam Shaheen. This Shaheen, is about Gurton Burton. Burton's role and the targets and the catches and the PPR value. Shaheen and the is now already seen. Shaheen is now Burton and Burton is now Ertz. Finkel right. is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Einhorn is a man. <laughs> like, I, there's sure Shaheen will be useful if if anything happens to Burton. Yeah, you know, ab- absolutely. I have no problem with any of that. It's not like Shaheen's not going to be out on the field. He is a little injured right now. This it was an ankle. Now it's a foot. 
I don't know what's going on. Low ankle but, sprain. But now it's a foot injury. Uh, well, the way that the way that fall looked on that catch that he had, it looked like it that could be like a potential like Liz Frank type foot yeah. stress. The so way his foot. Who stressed. really knows what's going on there? But I mean, I'm, I'm again, I'm not here to bash Shaheen by any no, means. It's not. But just the fact of you saying that you you want to pass on Burton, who by the way has been freer than free forever and recently the the ADP is going up and it seems like it's making sense why it's going up yeah Um, right well we gave gave you the cheap Burton forever and we gave him to you literally on our podcast called cheap money we gave him to you over and over and over again and so but for Matt Kelly to come on there and tell his listeners to go after to pass pass on Burton because they got Shaheen because he's he's a huge man and his agility score his size adjusted agility score is great and it was that of a wide receiver, which it really is and great for him, but that doesn't make him a good football player. And I'm not and saying not he's, he's not, not a, a good football, football player. That's, I, that's Trey a, Burton was a great football player. He had to sit behind another great football player. That's the thing. Right. I'm not saying I, on the way it works on our podcast, the way it works on Married to the Game, is I'm not going to say that Adam Shaheen is a bad football player to prop up my boy Burton. I'm right. telling you that Shaheen is a good football player, but Burton is about to beast in this in this system and he is a beast, and I'm not going to let a size of Shane is a good football player. There's this, really nothing to suggest that that he knows how to actually play. I'm I mean, not going to college tape is ridiculous. A size adjusted speed score dominator. get in the way of recognizing good fantasy points headed my way, and I'm not going to have my pride in the way of what I think about Burton to try to beat down somebody else. And right. that's basically what he was saying. Matt Kelly said the narrative around why Trey Burton is about to be good is the most ridiculous thing he's heard of all off season. And if you cannot see this how it works out in a one two three scenario like casey said and if you go back and listen to the trey burton stuff and cheap money and you go back and talk, listen to that chiefs episode and the bears episode comparing and talking about those coachings and the staffs and the it's way it all the coaching came, narrative search for it the on coaching there right right that's go what to youtube thanks, search Jay, for it it's round one draft pick over here if you go back to the coaching narrative podcast we laid it out for you in a very easy to follow situation and, and it's playing out and perfectly i just right i now. couldn't listen to that throw up in my mouth and not come in here and tell our people you know this is how we roll this is how it goes if you can't it's that football shit. is played on a field week, not in a computer week one football week, is played on absolutely. the field not week on one, a computer week two could roll around and maybe it is shaheen for all i know but well, there's not nearly as many logical pieces of evidence pieces of evidence that right. suggest that this that Shaheen is going to be in the role of a Kelsey or an Ertz and Burton is just going to be some schlub like right. he was on the last team that he was on like it's, this is just stupid just I'm not saying and, pass on Shaheen I'm saying get Shaheen too but take Burton first right. if you pass on Burton you're going to pay for it you might yeah. make you might end up finding other tight ends that are good. You, I'm not saying if you don't have Burton, you can't get tight oh, end points. Absolutely, but not. if you get Burton, it's a lot Just easier. Just isolated to Burton, like the the tight end and the Bears to own is certainly not Shaheen right now. I don't mm-hmm. mind owning Shaheen. He's cheap if you own Burton. It's great if not. Put him on the bottom of your bench. Cool, right? But cool. <laughs> and if you haven't, if you haven't gotten Trey Burton up to this point where he's been so cheap and his value's just been growing, like I'm still down to pay the market price for Trey Burton as it is right now because it's only going to keep going up. Absolutely. Next year, he's not going to be an eighth round pick. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, or that's ninth right. round, or wherever no, you can get him right absolutely now. Absolutely, not, not. going to happen. He's not. It'll be. He'll be more expensive. Obviously, at this point, the only thing stopping Burton's value is injury. And that's it. That only not thing even is, Mitch Punchable Face Trubisky can I, not throw him the ball. Uh, who's been a, t- a, a, a a safe quarterback's asset blanket. and target and blanket? It's it's the tight end. Yep. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, and we haven't seen Allen Robinson on the field, and we've hardly seen Trubisky and Burton on the field. But what you just saw there, and and how they used them, and what they were doing with them. It all just made too much sense, and it seems like it's all kind of coming together now. And yeah, you can you can listen to him, and you can pick up Shaheen, but you ain't getting any points from Shaheen. And I mean, you could get points for Shaheen, I'm saying, for sure, you, especially you're in not going to want to put him in your exactly in you your starting line in a best ball format where he's just one of your team that can be put in yeah. based on his weekly production. But if you got to hit submit in the lineup, you you do not want Shaheen over Burton, not even close. Right. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to win games. This is the kind of stuff that we're going that we've been giving you in the past and we're gonna stick continue to give you 
forever and ever. But the the juiciest stuff is going to be going to our Patreon people, our family members. Go over and check us out on Patreon, Patreon to continue getting stuff just like Burton for the entire off season, dating back all the way last year to the end of the season.